So now we, we are in the stage that we know what we have. We have a floor cam. We know something about excitation emission and what we measure and what is the origin of our signal chlorophyll fluorescence. And now how it really works. Uh, maybe uh, you already heard the term PAM. You have a device that is a PAM fluorometer. Uh, that means pulse amplitude modulated technique. It's not simple. It takes some time to turn your brain to think in these terms. Uh, but it's a very nice technique. Uh, in this part, I divided the presentation to a few sections. Um, in the beginning, I will make something like a physical physical introduction to the chlorophyll, uh, to the fluorescence measurement and chlorophyll. Uh, then I will tell you a few words about non-modulated measurement. That is something that is easy and you can even done you can even do it in the lab. From that, I will go to PAM technique. Um, again, I will show fluorometers, devices to measure chlorophyll fluorescence. And th that will be something like an uh, intermediate <laughs> section between uh, the chlorophyll technique and chlorophyll imaging, because imaging is a special thing. And then we'll, we will talk practically about uh, PAM chlorophyll uh, protocols, chlorophyll fluorescence protocols, and I will show you a few applications how it can be uh, how it can be used. <coughs> so chlorophyll measuring principle. Maybe you have seen or have it at work. This uh, schematic representation, it's called uh, Jablonski diagram. It's a schematic representation or, or diagram that explain uh, how the fluorescence is working. So uh, the fluorescence is a signal uh, that is emitted from kind of substance. Uh, this substance should be able to do fluorescence, not every component in the world, is fluorescing, uh, and the, the substance is called, or matter is called, uh, fluorophore. In photosynthesis, we have uh, several fluor fluorophores. Here is example of chlorophyll A. Uh, I'm At the moment, I'm not talking about uh, chlorophyll A in reaction center, which separates the charge, just any chlorophyll A that is a part of the antenna system, let's say because antenna system doesn't separate charge, it just absorb flor it just absorb light. And if there is a uh, too much light, it's emitted it as a fluorescence. So we have a fluorophore, chlorophyll eight, after absorption of quantum of light. This is a chlorophyll, let's say in, in LHC complex. Uh, this molecule is uh, this molecule is uh, transited from the um, S0 state to some higher excited state. It can be either S1 or S2. S2 is even, even higher from, S, uh, from S2. It's typically just dissipate to S1. And from S1, first excited state, there can happen different processes. As you can see, photosynthesis, the, the energy can be transferred further to the photosynthesis or the molecule can come back to the ground state uh, just by heat dissipation, so you will see nothing. Or it can emit fluorescence and go to ground state. Uh, in photos photosynthetic material, typically all of these processes, they statistically, they occur at the same time with some kind of... Um, uh, probability. Uh, I already mentioned that just a very little amount of absorbed light is used for fluorescence. Only one to five percent of absorbed energy can be dissipated as red fluorescence. So really, very, very little. And at room temperature, 
uh, this, the origin of this fluorescence is mostly from photosystem two. So if you measure any kind of uh, photosynthesis uh, by the floor cam at room temperature, this is mostly information about the state of photosystem two. Uh, here we have a um, very uh, complicated image, three Jablonski diagrams, and they simply should tell you uh, about the probability of these processes. Uh, imp important information is, if you use or take home message, uh, your response, uh, chlorophyll fluorescence and photosynthesis and heat dissipation, it simply depends on the light that you use. And this can be very cleverly used in designing some measuring protocols to give you information about the status of your sample. So, uh, on the first left image, if we use a weak light, for example, measuring pulses, very weak, short pulses, uh, some of the molecule of chlorophyll A, they are bring to higher excited state uh, and they de-excite to ground state, uh, just simply uh, transferring the energy to photosynthesis. Um, so, for example, funneling it to an another molecule or heat dissipation on fluorescence. And all of these processes, they are at the minimum level. Uh, so you see, uh, yeah, on minimum level. Uh, in this state, the maximum probability, there is maximum probability that this energy is used for photosynthesis. Uh, the green line, green arrow is narrow because we have weak light, so we have weak photosynthesis. But the photosynthetic process is working on the maximum rate at this moment, and you measure the lowest minimum value of fluorescence. If you use strong light, you saturate photosynthetic apparatus, and it cannot process more light. So that is why photosynthesis, the green uh, arrow, is now crossed. Uh, no more, no more, uh, no more photons can be used for photosynthesis. That is why uh, a lot of the a lot of the light is emitted at fluorescence. Uh, now it depends how long the light is applied. If it's on the short time, during a short time, like one second, uh, heat dissipation is not activated. So you really measure, you really uh, saturate photosynthesis. And you know that in this defined state, you measure maximum photosynthesis, uh, maximum fluorescence. And then if you use the light that is in between these levels, in between the weak light and strong light, uh, you statistically generate some photosynthesis or activate some level of photosynthesis. This is called effective photosynthesis. And a part of the light now, it, it, this light is used for longer exposures. So your photosynthesis is running, some light is dissipated as heat, called non-photochemical no, non process or non-photochemical quenching, and some uh, level of fluorescence is emitted as, as, as a fluorescence, and this is so-called steady state fluorescence. So using different kind of lights, you can put your sample in different physiological status or Define, defined, defined states that help you, helps you to describe how the photosynthesis is working. Um, and you have how to measure chlorophyll fluorescence. So simple measurement can be, and it is called non-modulated non fluorescence. Uh, it can be simply that you have dark adapted material, you illuminate it by light and you measure. Uh, if you measure it on a long time scale, it has not a lot of, uh, it would be very complicated uh, to, uh, to tell something about this fluorescence, but uh, there exists a protocol called Kowski induction or OG, OGIP protocol or GIP test, maybe you already heard. It was introduced by Professor Reto Strasser and these use a short, by, but and strong light, pa light pulse and a fast detector uh, to measure fluorescence response. Because it's not modulating, it's just you measure in constant light, so you get a 
some kind of signal, you need to do it. Uh, you need to do it in dark. You cannot do it in ambient light. And then Florcan allows you to measure pulse amplitude modulated technique. Uh, this technique is based on rapid, weak um, measuring flashes, so weak and short pulses um, that gives you or induce the flore basic fluorescence signal, F0. Something that does not, if you illuminate, you can illuminate by these short and uh, weak pulses your sample for a long time, and you will not see the, the change if it's in dark. Uh, these pulses are synchronized with a camera or with a detector. Uh, so for this technique, you typically need something more advanced, some advanced electronics to synchronize because the measuring pulses are typically in the range of 10 to 20 microseconds. Uh, so this is more technically, uh, technically complicated, but the advantages that you measure inside during just during the measuring pulses. And if you measure background before the pulse and inside the pulse, then you get something like a relative value. So even you have your sample in a kind of ambient light, uh, your measurements ignore that light, ignore some, any kind of non-pulse light or signals. And it only gives you information about your sample that is measured with pulsing measure with pausing, uh, pausing, uh, measuring pauses. So first, non-modulated chlorophyll technique. Um, this is a very famous protocol or measuring protocol called, as I said, OGIP. Uh, it has a typical shape, polyphasic. It's a polyphasic rise. And you can see that there are some, uh, some letters, O, J, I, P. It's a kind of description of the, of the curve. O means origin. J is the first inflection peak. I is an inflection peak. And P means as a peak or maximum. Uh, typical setting of this measurement is that you have a, a light pulse uh, no longer than one second, one or two seconds. Uh, you need what you need is a fast detector, something that can measure with a resolution, let's say, 10 microseconds, because if you have one second, you need to make a lot of measuring pauses to, to cover the, this polyphasic, polyphasic rise. Uh, yeah, typically you uh, draw this transient on a logarithmic scale. This is a name. It's called Kautsky induction or, or OGIP or fast fluorescence induction. And because it's fast, uh, it uh, was a very uh, it, it was modeled several times uh, because it's describing processes in PS2, uh, which are um, directly uh, connected with uh, status of plastohinon pool. So we are really at the beginning of the chain, and that was uh, many times modeled, and it's possible to model this. If you have a longer, long-lasting protocols, then into these models uh, come up uh, other processes like Cal Calvin cycle and um, some other processes. So it's very hard to model and explain what can be behind these processes. And of course, you can you can uh, you can use a lot of uh, different herbicides or modulators that can give you more info. OK, where is my electron in what status is now my photosynthetic apparatus? Uh, this, uh, this is a technique that is very, very practical. If you are performing some um, field test, for example, because it's very short, even you have to do it in dark. Uh, there exist some devices that I will show on uh, later. Uh, small devices, they can be taken to the field. Typically, they have a clip, so you measure in dark, and uh, you can measure fast. You can screen in the field. Uh, there exists an experiment with heat stress, heavy metals tolerance, but it was applied on many, many, uh, many, many experiments and many, many treatments. Simply, it's very fast and it's very practical. 
Here we have example with uh, ozone treatment. So you can see that after the treatment, the whole polyphasic rise is changed. Uh, by the way, this uh, curve can be described not only by OJIP uh, um, parameters, but based on that, there exists a huge theory of fluxes, photosynthetic fluxes, that you can calculate and you can uh, have a direct explanation of, uh, of a photosynthetic process. On the other way, pump technique, I already uh, mentioned, uh, you need for pump technique, you need short fleshies. They are called, called measuring fleshies. In your system, these are provided by orange LED panels. Uh, yeah, here is written, they are discriminated from the fluorescence, excited by continuous light, uh, because you measure before these uh, measuring pauses typically and during them, uh, synchronized with, uh, with your detector. And you, you subtract the signal and the background, so you get relative information about your relative signal and you can measure in ambient light. Measuring flashes from definition should be short enough and should be weak enough not to induce any level of photosynthesis, just a, just a basic. So they should not stop. If you remind your, the graphical representation of, of the photosystem, they should not uh, redu over reduce any electron transport uh, transporter in the chain, any QA, because it's the first one and with a, it's fastest process. Um, yeah, it's non-invasive. Uh, and except these measuring pauses, that is the basic of the technique, you can combine it easily with actinic light and with saturating light. Actinic light, this is a definition of light that lasts for longer time, few seconds or tens of seconds, minutes or tens of minutes. And this is a light that real, really drives photosynthesis, in, is uh, activated photosynthetic process and reaches some kind of steady state. And then in this technique, we use saturating pauses. These are typically the strong pauses of light uh, and the aim of them is to saturate photosynthesis. Again, <laughs> measuring pauses. So measuring pauses uh, from definition, they should not change photosynthesis. It should be so little energy delivered to photo uh, photosynthetic material that they don't induce photosynthesis, uh, but should give you uh, enough signal to see, uh, photos, uh, to, uh, to see fluorescence from the background. So this is the image of the Jablonski diagram I just reminded. Technically, in a floor cam, you are using something like measuring pauses between 10 up to 30 microseconds. There are some, some shutter settings. So typically, there is shutter 0 is 10 microseconds, shutter 1 is 20 microseconds, and then, then is shutter, shutter 2 is 33 microseconds. So these are just so short pauses that we applied uh, uh, repeatedly. If you switch it in a floor cam, you can see that floor cam is blinking, orangely blinking. These are measuring pauses. Synchronize with detector, uh, delivering just too low intensities to induce any photosynthesis. And what we measure is F0 fluorescence, the basic fluorescence or minimum fluorescence. Actinic light, Actinic light is typically continuous light. It can be even natural sunlight. And the aim of this light should be to stimulate photosynthesis. Of course, you can use uh, different intensities of actinic light. Uh, mostly, I recommend users to use actinic light with the same intensity or similar intensity as they have uh, in the growth chamber. But you can there does not exist any prescription what it should be intensity of, of actinic light. It's up to you. It's your choice. If you, you can use weak light or cultivation light or strong light to see something. Um, so this is a light that drives photo, photosynthesis. Saturating light from definition, 
it should be strong enough to saturate photosynthetic apparatus. So here is a here is a, a graphical representation. Saturating light should saturate photosynthesis. Uh, it has some lasting, typically one second, delivers a lot of photon uh, in thousands of micromoles. So the photosynthetic uh, machinery is overreduced. It cannot take more light and uh, light should be dissipated somehow, uh, mostly to fluorescence in, in this time span, one second. Most of the light is uh, emitted, re-emitted re as fluorescence and not used for heat dissipation. Here we have an uh, example of how, if you combine these three kind of lights, uh, how, uh, or here in this case, two lights, how the fluorescence transient can look like, or these measuring protocols. So here in the beginning, uh, we measure in darkness with dark adapted sam sample, and we measure ground state, ground phot photosynthesis, uh, fluorescence, uh, that is called F0. Here we are using just weak measuring, measuring pulses and measure F0. Uh, if we switch abruptly light on, then what happens is what we saw already a few times today is that fluorescence increases. And fluorescence increases because at this stage of your photosynthetic sample, the CO2 was, uh, it takes time to activate uh, calving cycle and CO2 fixation. And for a short time, uh, one second or two seconds, we overreduce QA electrons. So the deactivation process uh, coming from the first excited state to, to ground state, it can be just emitted fluorescence. So the fluorescence is increasing, rises to its maximum. In maximum, if the light is saturating, we know that all our QA uh, acceptors are fully reduced. If you even add some more light, you will not add more signal at this stage. After, after a few seconds, what we will see in continuous light, if the light is still continuous, uh, we will see that the fluorescence is declining because Calvin cycle is slowly activated. Uh, also on the longer scale, heat dissipation occurs. And if the Calvin cycle is activated, so the electrons from the QA can go further uh, and uh, you don't need to re-emit so, so much energy via chlorophyll fluorescence. And at the end, we are at the steady state and most of the PS2 reaction center are again open. Of course, it's not the same state as state one, dark adapted, because in dark adapted, uh, after a certain time of dark adaptation, all of the reaction center should be open, should be uh, um, re-oxide and ready to capture any light photon. Uh, and in the steady state, uh, there is a fraction of reaction centers. They are still closed because they are slowly responding or something like that. So you always measure here higher fluorescence signal than in state one in the dark adapted sample. Um, and uh, what you can define from here is quenching. You can define non-photochemical quenching and photochemical quenching because these two processes quench the fluorescence signal. They combine and quench the fluorescence signals. This will be a little uh, mental break now. Uh, I would uh, show you what fluorometers, what devices you can use to measure fluorescence. Uh, in principle, we can, uh, we can uh, distinguish non-imaging fluorometers and imaging fluorometers. On the left side, there are non-imaging. You can see typically these are small devices and we have few of them in offer. Uh, more left, there is a floor pan with a clip, floor pan with a de detachable clip. And on the most right, we have a floor pan or that is called aqua pen that is uh, developed for um, suspension measurement. 
Uh, these are very nice instruments and in these non-imaging instruments, it's uh, very easy to measure different protocols. Uh, all of these guys can even measure uh, OGIP and pump, uh, and, uh, pump protocols. Here are some more non-imaging fluorometers, uh, also from other company. On the top, you can see um, PAM or Lycor from other companies, from VALS and Lycor. Uh, what is obvious or multi multi spec? What is obvious from these images is that uh, you can. Th these are typically small devices, so you can easily take it. They are very portable. On the left down image, you can see our collaborators, and these are our pens. They were used in Ar Ar Antarctica. They were installed them there a few years ago over some kind of mosses, and they were measuring repeatedly monitoring these mosses during the season, summer season. Moreover, we also sent one of the floor pen uh, to, to the NASA, NASA Space Center for testing of photosynthesis. In contrast, imaging fluorometers uh, are more complex and larger devices. It can be as a microscope or closed floor cam. On the right, you can see the flat panel floor cam in phenotyping system or the rover floor cam in our field in PSI. Um, important is that you can measure not only just transient of your sample, but you can measure image. So it means in each pixel, you have a transient, chlorophyll fluorescence transient. You can do it on different scales from a cell level up to one leaf or the whole plant, even to the, um, even to the um, many plants it, uh, screening. Here is, some more, uh, here is some more images of how the plant skin system in plant phenotyping system can look like. Uh, on the left top, there is a, uh, uh, there is a um, flat panel floor cam in the compact system. Uh, then you can see it in some kind of different modular system. It can either be uh, in a mode that uh, you uh, are not using the um, transportation system of plants, but you have a table, fixed table, and you are driving the floor cam over this imaging area to measure. Uh, in most of the cases, you can see the flat panel floor cam. This is a concept that we invented or reinvented uh, with uh, plant screen systems. And uh, it gives you more flexibility if you measure plants of different size in automatic systems, because the top light illumination uh, is not so sensitive to certain um, imaging area, imaging distance. So you can easily use it for different plants in plant screen systems uh, where you don't, do not have shelving opportunity. All of these were camera system imaging. Again, uh, a core of the floor cam uh, of the imaging system is camera. It's, at the moment, it can be CCD or CMOS, doesn't matter. It should be enough sensitive for chlorophyll fluorescence. And what is the output of that? Normally, if you measure these non-imaging instruments, you get a one-dimensional one dimensional, uh, kinetics. So on the x-axis, you have some, uh, you have a time, and on the y-axis, you have just a transient of the, of the fluorescence. Uh, so something what you see here on the image, these graphs of quenching analysis, for example. Um, from the imaging device, you are getting a series of images. In other terms, you can imagine it like a video. So uh, for each state, so we measure a se sequence of images, we measure a video. Uh, we measure it with different lights. Uh, so on each image, you can see a little bit different signal. And if you calculate, if you would like to make a transect through this image, through one pixel, so for each pixel, you can get the whole chlorophyll fluorescence transient. Uh, from the video, there exist few approaches. Uh, you can only take an image, like for example, image of F0, 
and see if you see any kind of heterogeneity or image of FM. And here, uh, this slide uh, would like to demonstrate you that even if this video, if these raw images, you can see some kind of heterogeneity, some kind of contrast. Here are the images of the leaves. Uh, they were infiltrated by Pseudomonas seringae. Uh, and we already saw some kind of lesion in a FM image. Nothing was visible in F0 image. So uh, what I want to say, in some parameters, you can see the contrast or the treatment. In some parameters, you cannot from the imaging sequence. Moreover, you can take all of the images from the video and you can mathematically combine it. You can either uh, just make a simple ratio on some more complicated calculations, and you can get some uh, calculated parameters. And for each pixel, you uh, get the whole transient. Uh, on the down image, uh, you can see uh, a set upper, there is a set of measured parameters. We can call it also absolute parameters because these are parameters that you really measure uh, at measure with measuring pulses, with saturating light. These are descriptive parameters. Uh, and the lower line, it represents so-called calculated parameters. Calculated parameters are typically calculated the way it's mostly a kind of ratio to give you a relative value. So even if you use different devices, uh, that can give you a different amount of signal. So absolute or measured parameters, if you, if you measure by different uh, devices, it can, it can differ. But what should not differ, if you have correctly set lights, uh, calculated or relative parameters should not differ. So once you have a sample that has quantum yield uh, 0 0.8, you should get the same results. This is FE over FM. You should get the same results if you measure this floor pen, if you measure with um, uh, floor cam or some other devices from some other companies. 